Hello everyone, hope you're doing very well. This is Defender XDR news for March 2024. Let's dive right in. Okay, so getting started, this is the monthly news. This is all done by the program manager, Hike Reiter, and as part of the Microsoft program management team. And getting started with Defender XDR, what's new in, in March? Well, essentially the dark mode is, is available now. So if you navigate to your Defender XDR and you Right over here on the right hand, top right hand sort side, you can see the button for dark mode. So just turn it on. Have a look at what it looks like. It's going to look pretty cool, particularly if you're uh, a fan of dark uh, interfaces and if you don't like exposure to light like me. All right, cool. Now that's the first thing. Make sure you turn it on, give it a go. That's uh, really handy for anyone looking to utilize dark uh, mode in their dashboards. Next up, generally availability of the ability to assign incidents and manage incidents by assigning them to groups. So just know that that is available. It's easily just, just go to management incident or incident management and then assign a group to it that's available. Now, this one is I'm very excited for the next one, which is the preview availability of custom detection rules for Microsoft Security API. So that is really exciting because essentially what we're looking at is custom detections within Defender XDR. So think about creating a KQL query that is going to proactively look for a, look for matches and then raise alerts for those queries. So this looks very similar to what we have in Seam, such as the schedule rule, for example, right? So think about that. Now there are a few uh, quotas that we have to keep in mind because we're dealing with API, we're dealing with uh, requests to uh, the graph API. So be mindful of the quotas. This is all documented in the uh, documentation from Microsoft this is all available in the document that I'm going to share in the description of this video. So you can get multiple rules, you can get a single rule, create rule, and then you have different quotas per each type of API request that you are going to make utilizing these custom detection rules with API. So that's very exciting news. Now shifting gears a little bit, going to security experts. Microsoft security experts. There have been a couple of blog announcements. The first one is very worth uh, your time. So particularly if you're looking at protecting uh, your organization and mitigating the risk of QR code exploits, make sure you have a look at how Defender, Defender experts can protect you uh, against this kind of threats there. Shifting gears once more, looking at Defender for Endpoint. Now the big news here is two new attack surface reduction rules in public preview. Attack surface reduction rules are great to help mitigate and ensure that your endpoints are less exposed to risks and particularly misconfiguration and application risks. Now there are a couple new rules here. So block rebooting machine in safe mode. Uh, and uh, there's another rule for blocking use of copied and or impersonated system tools. The second one, uh, what it does is it the rule blocks the use of executable files that are identified as copies of Windows system tools. These files are either duplicates or imposters of the original system tools. Looking at Defender for Identity news, there are essentially new alert thresholds configuration option. So looking at this uh, documentation here, this is in preview, uh, and you should definitely have a look at what alerts uh, and alert thresholds can now be customized, but there are essentially new alert thresholds that you can configure. There are also, we have also published a new operations guides for Defender for Identity. So for daily, weekly, and monthly operations guide. So these are very handy, particularly if you are just getting started with the platform and you need to get your operations up and running. So what does your team need to know in order to get it working properly? So these operational guides are amazing for that. Right, so make sure your uh, analysts, your IT administrators that are dealing with Defender for Identity, they understand what are the daily tasks, when then weekly tasks, perhaps for your uh, top tier uh, analysts, for example, that are dealing with your security team, and then for your managers, perhaps understanding the monthly and quarterly kind of activities could be really interesting as well. All right, there's also in Defender for Identity, a new description uh, pane that is essentially coming into uh, Defender XDR. So Defender for Identity is adding a new attribute to your devices and your identities. So essentially for an object, it displays a description for that particular object. So definitely have a look at the document because it specifies what sort of objects and uh, operating systems it supports. But at the very end here, it has a paragraph on the remarks, right? So the understanding what this value means and what it looks like and what it'll surface in the Defender XDR portal, it's really important. Next up, Defender for Cloud Apps. So Defender for Cloud Apps is 
having a lot of new capabilities lately. You would have seen and heard about the new uh, essentially SaaS uh, security posture management capabilities that have been added to it, but there has there are even more stuff that has been announced in March. So first and foremost, the new app governance alerts for credential access and lateral movement. So there are new alerts for application governance customers. So remember application governance is uh, essentially an add-on that has been included into the platform a few months back. And now there are new alerts for customers that are utilizing that set of capabilities. So for sure, have a look at the list of the new alerts in here. There are a couple of them that have been announced. So the first one being application initiating multiple failed key vault read activity with no success. And the second one being dormant OAuth app, predominantly using Microsoft's Graph or Exchange Web Services. So have a look at those two new alerts for app governance, credential access and letter movement. But also the second big news for Defender for Cloud Apps this month has been uh, extend, extension support for applications for the SSPM capabilities of Defender for Cloud Apps. Again, SSPM meaning SaaS Security Posture Management. So the ability that Defender for Cloud Apps can and has check the configuration and grab even more alerts from third-party services that your organization is definitely using, right? So how do you bring those recommendations and configuration recommendations signals into our platform? Well, the Fair for Cloud Apps SSPM can do exactly that. So the big thing here is the general availability of the following apps in Defender for Cloud Apps now, Atlassian, Dropbox, and Zendesk. If we have a look at what's included in there, this is a little bit of an overview of what SSPM looks like. There are different ways and levels of permission that it needs for different applications. Be mindful of that. There is this great tool or great chart here that explains what applications support each kind of application visibility there, which is amazing. But then if we dive deep into the announcements of Atlassian, for example, one of the three that has been announced for the month of March for general availability, we're going to have a look here at uh, the ability of that the Defender for Cloud Apps can uh, essentially enforce control policies to Atlassian in order to find uh, anomaly detection uh, for, for anonymous IP addresses, for example, or in frequent country from activities from your users, uh, impossible travel, all coming from Atlassian uh, information, right? But at the very end here, we have uh, the SaaS security posture management capabilities. And what kind of recommendations can Defender for Cloud Apps surface for your uh, Atlassian connected service into Defender for Cloud Apps. Essentially, it can tell you whether you need to perform activities and configurations such as enabling multi-factor authentication, enable uh, session timeout for web users, enhance password requirements. So just keeping a check at whether your configuration has been properly set up or not. So just a better way for you to get all the recommendations you need in your environment from the Microsoft Defender XDR platform. I find this set of capabilities particularly useful because understanding how to properly configure your environment is a challenge that all of my customers bring back to me. And having the ability to just assess the configuration of these third-party services from Defender XDR and Defender Cloud Apps, it's amazing, right? So think about that. Now, Defender for Office 365, the big news here is updates to the configuration analyzer uh, for Defender for three, Office 365. So if I have a look at this, these are the updates to the configuration analyzer for Defender for Office. Now, configuration analyzer is a great way that our customers and one of mine, actually, I had a conversation recently where they were asking me, hey, have you set it up properly? Of course, you have recommendations, but hey, configuration analyzer is going to look at your policies and tell you whether you could perform improvements in your policies, for example. The new recommendations here would include five, for example, right? So safe links policy allows you to create custom safe links policy, outlook, configure external tags and outlook, anti-phishing policy, which enable you to first contact safety tips, DKIM, configure DKIM and SPF for your domains, and built-in protection policy, remove built-in protection exclusions, for example. Now, I highly recommend you have a thorough look at this and review your configuration following this uh, announcement right here. Uh, and lastly, the last thing I wanna bring up is the Microsoft Defender Vulnerability Management Ninja Training. Now it has a certificate of completion, which is pretty cool. I went ahead and uh, went through the uh, the material, but also at the very bottom here, you have a knowledge jack. It's a forms. Go through it to make sure you understand all the core capabilities of the Microsoft Defender Vulnerability Management, which by the way, some parts of it is included in your Defender for Endpoint Plan 2. You should definitely make use of it. And once you go through the knowledge jack, make sure you click, click here in this 
uh, link here right here and send your information so that you get your own certificate for your Microsoft Defender Vulnerability Admin Training Certificate. All right, with all that said, these are uh, some of the highlights of the Defender XCR news for the month of March 2024. Hopefully you found this informative. I know I've been really quickly covering all of it, but that's the point. You just tune in here, listen to the, to the highlights. If there's anything of your interest, just jump into the documentation that you can find in the description. If you like this sort of video, make sure you, of course, you like and you subscribe because I'll, I'll be keep doing those. All right, see you next time.